How did I retire early? Did I do some kind of coaching program? No. Coaching wasn't a big thing back then. Well, not to my knowledge anyway. So I, my background is in a bachelor. I studied a bachelor of business in uni. So I studied accounting in high school. Um, that was kind of almost by accident. So I actually enrolled in physics, but on day one, they were weighing books and I thought it was really stupid. So I thought I'm going to go swap subjects and do accounting instead. That one moment actually changed my entire life. So because I studied accounting in high school, I just thought, well, I'm just going to continue doing that in uni because I didn't know what else I should study. That felt like a real job other than, you know, being a doctor, lawyer, which I didn't want to do, which my mom wanted me to be a lawyer, which I was thinking I'm never going to fight for people or stand up for people that I may not want to support. So I always, I knew I always wanted to have the choice um, and I didn't want to be placed in a pos position where maybe because of money, I wouldn't have a choice and had to fight for um, people that I didn't believe that went against my moral and um, I wanted to stand for something that I felt true. Like I want, like justice felt important to me. I didn't want to have to fight for the for a side I didn't want to. So uh, because of that, I felt like accounting is at least a safer option because um, I just have to make sure the books are right. <laughs> In fact, I feel like that is the the purpose of an accountant to ensure that the numbers are correct. Like if there are discrepancy, then what what's causing that, and how can we change it and make sure that the company is producing a profit and that the business is viable right so because of that uh wanting to do something that's like hey it's gonna this this job's gonna be there regardless to ride through the the, the hard times and if it's easy then well let's grow it some more right um so how did i then retire doing this accounting thing um I think it's really important, firstly, it's not about which coaching program I took. I didn't take any coaching program because I didn't want to pay for my own education at that time, which I don't think this is a great idea. What happens is when I started um, doing my job, I would only take up training that is offered by the company because I don't want to pay for my own education. It felt like education to me at the t at that time in my life, I, I felt like it's a chore. Like, why would I want to study more? I've done enough of my studying, haven't I? Haven't I paid my jewels dues already? Like when I finished uni, I like toss toss. When at the moment I toss my hat in graduation, isn't that isn't that it? That from here on, anyone that wants me to learn anything, they should pay me to do it. So I felt like my employer are the ones that if you want to train me to do something, won't well, invest in me and I'll, I'll do, do the work. That was my mentality. So I was kind of like, well, I, I studied my accounting stuff. Then on top of that, I really wanted to get better at doing my job. So I would um, get training on Excel and training on like financial planning, uh, things of that nature um, to do my duties better. I also managed to, after a while, um, got into some like new manager training and things like that um, to learn things like leadership skills, negotiation skills, which which are helpful and yet not that helpful. So these corporate type training are relatively generic. And if you haven't been to them, any training at all, of course, it offers a good base. But with the information that I'm aware now, like I know hands on heart that I can create a better one day leadership training, that I can create a better one day negotiation training. Not even one day, like even like, if because most of these are, could be like two hours or something like that. I know that I can create a better team bonding training or how to have more confidence, um, how to communicate with people. Like I know... I can provide a better training at this point after all the training I've spent with my own money though. So there's a, definitely an aspect of me that's like, hey, should I go back to corporate and provide these type of training? Because um, I know the value. So now we're talking about 
So what did I study to get to that point? Most of what I had done to get myself in a financially better position, I don't know how much of it has to actually do with the knowledge of accounting because honestly, I don't think I applied much of that. Um, I don't really set a budget. I know as an accountant, I really don't want to say that, but I don't set a budget so much unless I'm struggling. So one of the thing is like, I feel like I'm going to say that if you're someone that is struggling with money, you should have a budget and you should keep your eyes eyeballing on it. Cause that's what I did when I was really poor. I would, be, I would know every dollar that's gone through. I would be so conscious of paying for like this $2 bags of grape first, paying for like $5 for it type thing. Like I'll be so conscious of that. So if you're not money conscious, you need to be. It's actually not to do with even budgeting. It's just being conscious of where every dollar is going out if you are struggling in finance. So I kind of take a bit of pride of not being in that boat when I'm not. So if I'm able to get myself out of that situation and now I don't have to eyeball my money all the time because I know I'm not going to randomly dip into red. Like, I guess the habit is already there. Because let, let's say when, when you go through the day, it's not like you're always looking at your time, right? Like you're not going, oh, five minutes have passed, 10 minutes have passed, 15 minutes have passed, an hour has passed. It's like, you naturally have a a timer in your head to gauge like, oh, now it's a, roughly about 15 minutes. Oh, I should go back to work now. Oh, yeah, I was on my coffee break or whatever. Like, oh, now it's about time. Like, you have a sense of time, right? That sense of sense is the same sense about money. When you spend, when I'm spending money, it's like, okay, I have a sense that I'm now spending a little bit too much or I have a sense that it's like, okay, I'm in a good position or not. So I don't have this feeling of I need to look at it all the time because of this sense. And and if it's not something you've, you've got yet, this, this is the same sense about time, then you need to develop this first. And that's where a budget would be the thing that I that you should focus on if you haven't developed this within yourself yet. Then after this is the soft skills. So I was always really big on, I'm an introvert. I don't really know. I don't really like talking to people. And if I don't talk to people, well, how can I become a leader or a manager? Like, how can I manage people? How can I get paid more? So I never caught it in my mind, coaching or personal development, anything like that. Like I knew like a mentor kind of existed, but I didn't know how to approach to get myself a mentor. Um, cause I'm just too scared to ask, like, why would someone like of that caliber, um, want to talk to me or mentor me? Like, what can I offer them? Um, and I was also scared that maybe if, if they told me something and I wasn't ready to do it, then I'm going to be a really bad mentee. So then I'm going to make them look bad. So maybe I don't even deserve a mentor. So because of that, I've never really outwardly went to seek for a mentor cause I didn't believe in myself enough. I felt like I needed to earn my way. Um, and that means like acquiring skills. So I always thought of them like as soft skills. What soft skills do I need to complement the hard skills or the technical skills that I have developed as part of academically trained, right? Through institutional things, um, plus the training that I've stacked on top of those. So I knew that I needed to one, learn how to deal with people actually it's just dealing with people how can you ask for a pay rise how can you um tell people what your worth is like what do you actually have to do <laughs> the realistic is like the realistic thing was really like how do you get a promotion how do you get paid more so in order to get paid more you have to be able to convince people right and to be able to convince people you need to have evidence so it's like, how do I show people off evidence? It's like, if, if I just worked hard every day, it wasn't get it wasn't being seen. And I'm seeing other people in the office that are not working as hard getting the promotion. So it's like, it, it was a realization of like, 
okay, just because you work hard does not mean you will get recognized. Like that is a fact. So instead of being angry about this or how the world is so unfair on how it, how like it's just, why is it not rewarding the hard workers, the people that are actually doing work? Like instead of getting mad about that, there was a point when I just switched and go, okay, you're obviously playing the wrong game. Just accept the fact. Just accept the fact that you're playing the fucking wrong game. People here that are doing less work that are, that are walking around talking to people that are getting seen is playing a better game. Like, no, I do not want to be a, like, I do not want to have to, like, kiss some ass, nor do I want to be the person that plays a political game. I do not want to be that person. However, it does not mean I, I am smarter by staying here, though. At least recognize what game they are playing, how it is being played, and how can I then whilst maintaining my morals and standard dabble into here and play this game without losing myself that's the, that's the game i'm trying to play like even now 